The teaching of the Buddha is about cause and effect. Keep in mind everything you learn. Tonight I'm going to take you to the idea of the dependent origination, which is again is about cause and effect. In here, in these four items, which one is the cause? Which one is the effect? Dukkha is the cause or effect? Effect, effect right? Okay, good. Okay. And which one is the cause? Life. <laughs> craving. Craving, right. Yeah. Okay, craving gives right to effect. What about the number three and number four? Which one is the cause? Which one is the effect? The cause will be the Okay, the path is the cause, the effect is the ending, right? So if you're following eightfold path, craving will be removed. That's the effect. So if you remove the craving, the dukkha also become the effect of your action. Basically, action and consequence. Same thing in dependent origination. So we talk about dukkha already, and we talk about the cause of craving, which is the Buddha point to tanha. My question to you is, is craving alone the root cause of dukkha? Because if you study by yourself, okay, you go through the text, and this is what the text said, what this is what the Buddha said, the cause of dukkha is called samuttaya, and he said, okay, the second noble truth is tanha, and there are three kinds of tanha, right? This one, number one, number two, and number three. And this is, that's it, okay? There's no other explanation what cause dukkha only these three things and point to tanha three kind of tanha if you study by yourself include happen to me too and that's what i have been told and as i study by myself i getting to understand more the relationship between the four noble truth and the dependent origination the buddha explained his enlightenment experience in two dimension the first one he said if someone make known fully about the Four Noble Truth, and then you can realize Nibbana. That's one idea. And another occasion, the Buddha said, if someone understand the process of the Twelve Link in the Dependent Origination, then you would experience Nibbana. So these two things point to the same place, which is Nibbana. So we must know the relationship between the Four Noble Truth and the Dependent Origination. Okay, you may be hearing these terms, you know, for the first time in your life about Patija Samuppada, the dependent origination, it's worth it. To me, I, I really wish someone tell me earlier when <laughs> at the young age so I can dig deeper into the idea of this because this is so important. As I study, I feel right, like this is extremely important that every human being should know and come to this wisdom. Not only benefit you, it benefits people around you and how you should live your life. So back to this question, is craving alone is the root cause of Dukkha? My answer would be yes, because this is what I study, right? The Buddha mentioned nothing else. There's no ignorance here, there's no clinging here, there's no becoming, no nothing here, just the word Tanha only is the key word on this paragraph, Tanha in Pali. So the answer would be yes. But now we have come this far, you are an advanced student. You <laughs> your answer should be different from now on. Here is the idea, right? Number one, when we talk about enlightenment, enlightenment is about fully understood the Four Noble Truth and fully understood how dependent origination work. That is why the Buddha said, hey, my discovery is so profound. Should I teach or should I not teach? And in that teaching, he talked about dependent origination. But when he goes to give the first Dhamma talk, he talk about the Four Noble Truth instead of the Dependent Origination. Mm. Why? And he, this is what he talk. This is what he talk to those to those five monks. That's it. And the monk understand. He understand the teaching. He understand what caused suffering, and he can remove that cause of suffering. He achieve, you know, the certain level of enlightenment. So the Buddha don't have to mention Dependent Origination if the student happen to be smart. Okay, and it's enough, it's enough perfect information for him to know this much and achieve enlightenment. Many cases, Buddha don't talk about dependent origination at all, and people achieve enlightenment. But for us, I mean, we, need, we need to have this theory clear and understand how a man can achieve enlightenment. In these two approach, okay, 
to understand the Four Noble Truth and to understand the dependent origination. In fact, they're talking about the same thing. It's about cause and effect, action and consequence in a more detailed structure. So some scholars said the Four Noble Truth is a short version of the dependent origination. In the sheet that I give you, if you look at the second column, right, the first column is a dukkha. And if you see the second column, you see that second column is the, th the cause of dukkha. And as you can see here, there are 12 items that cause dukkha. Mm -hmm. But the Buddha pinpoint only one item, which is craving in this teaching. But in fact, there are 12 things involved. He's just pointing to one thing, which is craving. The question is why? Why he did not share with those five monks about, oh, you know what, you need to start off with understand ignorance first, and then mental formation, and then consciousness, and then nama, rupa, and then six sense bed, on and on. <laughs> the Buddha mentioned nothing, he just mentioned the craving. Imagine yourself if you were to explain the word ignorance and the craving to someone, which one should be easier? Craving, yeah. right? Crave to buy green scarf, right? Yeah. But if I have to, and explain ignorance to, to a student or to a new student of Dhamma. I don't know how to explain that. Mm -hmm. I may, but I think it's difficult. Why don't we start off with craving first? Craving causes suffering, that's for sure. But deep down, craving and ignorance, they work together. They are buddy. Mm -hmm. But the Buddha did not mention that. It's too deep for those five aesthetics. It's mm -hmm. just a waste of time. Just get to the point, just get to the craving, okay? So I will keep coming back and forth, okay? So this is the 12 item in this dependent origination, right? Starting from ignorance. Uh, there are three defilements that mention on this list, on this 12 item. These are the three defilements. So let me go through this quickly first and then I will group them up so you can see them in the easier format. So the name is ignorance, okay? That's the starting point of the chain and Second one is mental formation. Okay, we have no idea what it is. Okay, and the third one is consciousness. Okay, consciousness is about now. It's come about about us, body and mind. About about consciousness, about nama rupa, its name and form, which is body and mind. Sixth sense. Okay, eye, ear, nose, tongue, taste, touch. Okay, we understand that. And then contact. Okay, contact. Contact. When the eye see form, that means, and you know what it is, and that means contact. My eye contact this crystal ball and my consciousness with me, so I know it's crystal ball. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I see you, but my mind not with you. I think of something else, so I don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. So this is called contact. Three things have to meet. The eye, good eye, and see something. And that seeing, your consciousness also working too. Mm -hmm. Then you know what it is. And then when you see something, feeling happen like don't like you show and when you see something and then when the feeling happen in this structure the buddha point to what happening after feeling is craving okay and when we crave for something we cling we want to have it when we cling on something we become something someone and when we become something then give rise to birth aging and death and this is dukkha suffering happening after we cling so this is the idea so what we see here, if we are asked, what is what the benefit of knowing dependent origination? Okay, number one answer should be, if you look at the first item on the list, ignorance, and the last item on the list is about death, birth, aging, and death. So this is dukkha, and dukkha caused by ignorance. It's about cause and effect. Dukkha caused by ignorance. Can dukkha caused by craving? Yes, caused by craving too. It happened before before we feel dukkha. So we know that dependent origination is the explanation of how dukkha come about, come to exist, what caused it. And depend means something depend on each other, right? It, dukkha doesn't happen alone. It doesn't fall off from the sky and then we are suffering. It comes from something that caused dukkha. And that thing the Buddha point to craving, point to ignorance. So everything we do is drive by the ignorance and ignorance whenever you crave for something okay, underneath that craving is also there's a the deeper layer that 
of that inner voice that drives by ignorance. Okay, so these are the 12 things. And just to make sure that you understand, the ignorance or avicca, okay, to be specific, why the Buddha call human being, the, we are ignorant being, including him, himself before he achieved enlightenment, because we are ignorant to the nature of life. We, we are these people, we we dancing on the canvas of suffering. <laughs> All of us. Okay. And we don't feel anything. We're so ignorant. Drinking is happiness. Let's go drinking. Let's go partying. Killing is good. Let's go harming people. Taking advantage is good. There's no consequence of doing good or doing bad. The, all of this is ignorant. We don't know the truth of life. We don't know the reason what causes us happiness, what causes us dukkha. Because the way we see happiness is been, has been distorted. Happiness comes from harming people. Happiness comes from corruption, comes from sexual misconduct, comes from breaking precepts. And that is the that is wrong, wrong way of looking at happiness. The idea of avicca or ignorance is about not knowing the full noble truth. And when you hear the word noble truth, right away you should think, think of dukkha and ending of dukkha. So that means if you don't know that the, this is the, the true nature of human being and we cling on dukkha. And again, what is dukkha? This is dukkha. Connect the dot, okay? The Buddha said dukkha is this one. You have a wrong idea of clinging of the five aggregates which we haven't talked about it maybe tomorrow evening we will talk about the five aggregates for the next lecture in another teaching he said the man greatest fear is dukkha but we don't fear dukkha because we don't know what it is we still keep on dancing until the day we die <laughs> mm. <laughs> dancing for what don't know, no purpose. Okay. Ignorance is bliss, maybe. Huh? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> it's this thought perception about life. Okay. Um, and it's just like a blind man. All of us, we are blind. You think you see things, but what you see is being distorted. We don't see things the way they are. So we need to develop the wisdom to be able to see things the way they are. And that is why here on the list, okay, we're talking about the higher wisdom that help us to develop the jhana, the yana, the knowledge, the insight, develop the inner eye, okay, and go deeper. This is the another thing that may help you to be able to connect all the dots together, okay, and see how dukkha come about and how to end it. That's that's the that's the idea to keep in mind. Uh, this is ignorant, right? And uh, ignorant is here. This is the first guy on the on the list on this process. Start from ignorant. Is there anything else before this that cause ignorant? <laughs> Maybe too deep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think so. Okay. There's another term as well. It's called asawa. What is asawa? It's hard to ex has to translate. See, but the Buddha cut off here. I think he, this is more than enough for ordinary people like us to try to understand. <laughs> if we keep on going on this chain, uh, maybe no one would be able to understand. We have to see it. The Buddha see, he did not think. He see how this chain work. And to me, this is the game of life. If you play any game, you play to win or you play to lose. You want to win, right? Whatever game you play. And now you play the game of life. Do you know the rule of life in order to win? To win the game, you need to know the rule. The basketball, the soccer, swimming. Uh, and then you cannot win if you don't know the rules. But do you know the rule of life, the law of nature? If you don't, sorry, cannot win. Just impossible to win. So this is the game of life that the Buddha discovered. Oh, I have been playing wrongly. That's why I, my life is up and down in the cycle of existence. I was trapped. So all of us human beings, no matter who you are, whether you know it or not, it doesn't matter because it's the truth, it's the nature. Whether you're born in the West, in the East, doesn't matter. 
we human being and human being we have the same common mental impurity this is greed hatred illusion all of us whether you know it or not but the thing is no single one human being have the same action <laughs> we have the same disease right in our mind but we don't have the same action and that is why we receive the different consequences in life your happiness and my happiness is not at the same level you and your friend you and your dad you and your mom we don't have the same level of happiness because of the, le the different level of understanding of the truth of life if that drink gambling but you don't he will receive the consequence of drinking of gambling right sometime down the road may be broken family may be having cancer because of drinking too much smoking too much and this is very logical but if you don't drink you don't gambling you have a chance to live longer right i mean if nothing like accident happen in, in general and this is something we can grasp so this is the game of life that the buddha discovered and that's why he said it's profound i believe there are many things before this that he did not mention also something else maybe after this as well but he is only you know explain 12 item and he said this is profound i shouldn't teach but something difficult it doesn't mean we shouldn't study right we should this is valuable so many many buddhist people hear the word paticca samuppada they stop they don't want to know what it is it sounds foreign it sounds difficult it sounds tough it sounds like for the for the monk only not for me for the lay people But to me, this is very beneficial. If you can understand this, go back and learn and relearn and keep on relearn it. If you can understand this and you can put into a simple English or your own language and explain to your friend and people in your life circle, you know that would benefit the whole world. Mm -hmm. Start from one one person first mm -hmm. of how dukkha come about and how can we. If we know how dukkha come about, I think we can do something about life. We can break. Or slow down this cycle, this dependent origination. Okay, there are two approaches when it come to study dependent origination. Okay, uh, when it come to study dependent origination, that you know, proclaimed by most of the scholar. The first authoritative approach is they call it three life, three lifetimes. And the second approach is called cyclical, mean like circle, like the cyclical approach to to see how they work. In the, in the in the circle, but this is the uh, the first idea, first approach to study this, and uh, I don't want it to go too deep. It's going to be more more term and more confusing for you. But it can study in the three life. Three life mean in short, okay. This is the first life, what we did in the past, okay. Ignoring that caused us to do something bad, mental formation, mental what we think we become, we think bad, we say bad, we do bad. And it become the karma, and then we born here, right? This is the, this lifetime. We become human. We have consciousness. We have body, mind. We have sense. We have eye, ear, nose. We have feeling, and then we crave. We crave. We cling again. And what we do here in this life again is accumulate, and then eventually this will happen in the future. Birth in the dependent origination mean rebirth. It means rebirth, means future birth, not not this birth. So this means three lifetime, okay. And okay, and what benefit us knowing three lifetime? Nothing we can do in the past, right? Can't change nothing, right? We, not nothing much uh, that we can do because we born already, okay. But we still keep on clinging, right, and making choice in life. Sometimes wrong, sometimes okay, sometimes not okay because we don't know that we don't know. And the Buddha, from his word, he said, "An oil lamp burns depends then on the oil and the wick. Okay, this frame depends on the oil and the wick. the The frame itself is neither permanent nor independent. If no oil, no frame. If there's oil, but no wick, get no frame." You need both wick and oil to get the frame. So if the frame is the dukkha, the good news is dukkha come from a reason. 
it comes from cause. So we need to identify the cause and then we can remove dukkha. Just like this one, right? You talk about this. You identify your, your illness and then you diagnose and then you look for the cure and then you treat yourself. The treatment is about cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect. Same thing in here. So for another look, easier look, there are 12 of them, you know, it's like a lot of terms here. So if I group them together in three boxes, maybe easier to follow. But keep in mind, there are many approaches, okay? there are many dimensions, okay? there are many books that are available that talk about this topic is deep. People share different thoughts and different ideas and different view of dependent origination. So tonight is just introduction, okay? eye-opening for you guys. The first box is about defilement, gilesa, mental impurity, greed, hatred, delusion, here. And the second group, independent origination, is about action. Action that drive by defilement, and then it causes dukkha. Gilesa, gamma, and vipaga in Pali. Okay. Mental impurity, greed, hatred, delusion. Which so ignorance, we don't know the truth of life. Craving and clinging, these three things fall into the group of defilement. And this defilement, okay, together with mental formation and becoming, this is the action what we do. And our action will cause dukkha. Cause dukkha. Consciousness, name and form, six senses, contact, feeling, birth, aging and death. So this group is the group of dukkha. So dukkha come from the wrong action and wrong, wrong action drive by ignorance craving and clinking. So in the big picture, it looks like this. I think the first box is maybe makes sense. Maybe you know you guys can follow. Okay, ignorant, craving, clinking. When we crave for something, we cling on something, we want more of that. And then we, we, we somehow, the mind is agitated. The mind cannot be still. That, that nature of mind is called dukkha, unstable mind, agitated mind. But mental formation and becoming, how come it fall into the group of action? And this may be hard to grasp. We have to do something to get the result, to get the consequence. If you do good, we get good result, good consequence. If you do bad, you get bad consequence. <laughs> and now we know the driving force of our action is mental impurity. So every, there are three kinds of action that human being can commit. From thinking, good or bad, not good, not bad. From saying and from doing, from your deeds. There are three ways you can commit karma. Karma means action. From think, thinking, saying, and doing. Saying and doing drive by thinking. You think first, then you do things. So in Buddhism, thinking okay, is, is most important action that you must pay very close attention because everything comes from your thing. Mm -hmm. The reason she buy that green scarf because she thinks she deserves it. Mm -hmm. And that thinking drive by ignorance and craving behind the scene. So it keep on driving us to crave for delight, delight here and there, buy more, have more, become more. And this, this is mental formation. And mental formation is another, another term that use is about, and this is something I really like, it's called habit, the habit of the mind. The stream of consciousness that he keep on changing moment to moment. This is dealing with the mind. The mind has ability to think. Think good, think bad, not good, not bad. Think good, think bad, not good, not bad. Every single moment. And whatever we think is become the habit of the mind, of the way the mind thinks. And what we think in the previous life is become us in this life too, what we have been doing. Okay. And when we do, okay, when we start doing something uh, repeatedly, drive by the thinking that we have been cultivated, and that become our our permanent habit. <laughs> if you born in the family that in the slaughterhouse, you born with killing and parents are killing. Okay, it's our career. Kill the cow, kill the sheep, killing. You kill your whole life. You feel nothing. You feel okay with killing. But another, your friend, neighbor, they don't kill. Parents said, no, don't kill, kill no good. So these two kids grow up in different condition. And this is their mental formation. They form different thought, 
different view of the world and this become the habit for the future life to be born and, and okay with killing no sympathy and for this boy you know, cannot kill as bad as demur it cannot do it they get scared they get worry about harming others they might just cannot do it so what 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 drive these two children to think differently right this is this is how mental formation start forming at the young age little by little if you teach your kid to give at the young age it become their will their their mental habit their mental formation little by little okay one step one thing at a time and then it will become that person a, a cruel person a loving kindness person person want to give stingy person it, you will become and it become your action and then not just this lifetime it become your action in the future lifetime too and the action will cause dukkha if you follow this guy this ignorant craving thinking we will end up suffering not only in this very present moment but the life after that and the future future uh, rebirth as well you can see that there is the concept of the law of karma also hindered here because the rebirth here is the keyword what would be condition of our future life if we are going to reborn this is, has to be the action from this life right and the, who we are at the moment is the accumulation from the action we did in the past plus the action we did in this life and it become it become the condition for the future life people who kill who take life may born in the future with a short life die soon born handicapped for example but people who save life of self precept never harm no one kind may born in have a long life maybe good life condition because that's how the mind attract have you heard about the law of attraction right the mind attract your your mind energy attract the same energy energy of bad energy kill lie sexual misconduct you will hang out with those people because you feel that you and them become one <laughs> but if the pure mind will attract the pure the mind is another name of the mind is called element the element the same element will attract each other okay you will attract good people into your life if you are good people yeah in short there are three three category okay this is just just one way of looking at okay when it come to the 12 item in the in the dp or dependent origination uh, for this you know 30 40 minutes that we have i know this is a huge topic and the most difficult topic in the dhamma of the buddha and, but i want you to know that i want you to hear about it so i create my karma in the future life <laughs> you know, when i born in the future someone will tell me early age so i can start prepare and, and know about this more okay okay we have defilement here we have karma here and then that what we do the karma that drive by this defilement will cause us to be suffering mm -hmm. to be suffering now if we go back to the same example on that video right what drive rebecca to buy the green scarf because even though she don't have enough money she still buy it anyway her her suffering is debt to pay the credit card at the end of the month suffering right and her action is she buy it anyway even though no money she knows she has no money and that action drive by craving to have that green scarf you see this is how you can relate it to the concept of the dependent origination and you should be able to to relate it back to the four noble truth too because it's the same topic it's the same topic and here let me emphasize again the second noble truth is explained here in the dependent origination process now we see because second number truth is the cause of dukkha right and this how dukkha come about and what caused it to come about if we understand this then we can do something about the game of life you can start doing something about the game of life we may not be able to fix what happened in the past we can do something now right now to decide the future future can be tomorrow can be next five years if you study hard, you're going to be smart, smarter than today, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing fancy about it. We, if you don't believe in the rebirth, no problem. 
you can still use this. Mm-hmm. Apply this theory to live good life now, this life. And if this life is good, don't worry about future life. It will be good. Mm-hmm. To me, the law of karma and rebirth is the essence of the teaching of the Buddha. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> As I mentioned, right, you see the rebirth in every noble truth. And now you see it again here. Number 11 is about rebirth. Okay, birth means rebirth. Jati. Jati means birth. Now we come to know it. My question to you is how can you prevent craving from happening? Is there anything we can do by looking at this 12 item or this circle? Okay, craving is here. Rebecca crave for the green scarf, her craving is here. Once she craves, she cling. No money, no problem. I'm going to use credit card. She knows that she will end up suffering. She okay with that at the end of the month. If you see here, what happened before craving? No, right before craving. Oh, feeling. Right. Mm. Feeling. And what happened before feeling? Contact. Contact, right? This is in sequence. As long as you have eye and your eye is not blind, you can see things. And when you see things, you will feel something about what you see. There are many ways to deal with this. But the thing is, keep in mind that every time we see something, we have the feeling toward what we see. Either like it, don't like it, or neutral. If you like it, it's drive by lust. If you don't like it, it's drive by hate. If you don't know what to do, it's drive by ignorance. So no matter what we do, we are trapped in the realm of defilement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But the good news is, the Buddha said, we can do something about it. Every time you see something, there is contact happen, and then you start feeling. So right before craving happening, you feel first. But if you can be mindful of what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, then you can minimize your feeling Mm -hmm. toward what you see. When you have mindfulness, you can lessen your craving. If Rebecca sees the green scarf, and if she's mindful that, you know what, that's not urgent. Now this month, focus on working and pay the bill first. Mm -hmm. Green scarf can buy later. Even though it's on sale, it's going to on sale sometime in the future. If she slow down, she mindful, she take a few deep breaths, I think she would walk away from the shop and go back to work. But because she never practiced mindfulness, maybe. Or right away, when we see, we feel, when we feel, we cling. When we cling, we want to have it. Right away. It happened very fast. Super fast. Mm-hmm. And worry about payment later. It happened to me too when I was working. You know, just mm-hmm. Because we have credit card, right? We use the future money to enjoy life now and suffering at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Drink first, then first, get dressed first. <laughs> and worry about payment later. So this is, this is how craving works. You see how smart of the Buddha. He knows this is difficult, this is tough. But when he teaches the lay people, he talks about three things. If someone asks what the Buddha teaches, this is what the Buddha teaches. This is practical. Okay, very practical. He said, stop doing bad and do good and purify the mind. These three things will save you, protect you from suffering. If you do good, not just observe precept, five or eight precept. Not just five ways to reach out and help others by doing good, loving kindness, forgiveness. But the important part here in the teaching of the Buddha is meditation. If you don't practice meditation and mindfulness, you cannot develop wisdom. Wisdom comes from concentration, from seeing things the way they are. Concentration comes from developed mindfulness. To have good mindfulness, you observe precept. To see everything you know, in sequence. So this is, the Buddha laid out a very nice structure and that is why this is, this is very profound how the Buddha trained the monk. He don't teach the lay people how to do all of this, but he give them three things to do. Okay, to do good, okay, whatever you consider good, do it. Whatever you consider bad, don't do it. Okay, buying, buying something which you don't have money to buy and it's not 
urgent at the moment is considered a bad thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's evil. You cause yourself trouble for no reason. And then don't do it. It's evil thing. Avoid doing it. And do good means don't buy it. Buy it later. And go back to meditate first, Rebecca. <laughs> and then, and then you'll be okay. You will have no craving for those green scarves because you meditate. When she meditates, her mind will become calm down and clear. What calm her down? The craving start to calm down. The feeling toward that object start to calm down. And then, uh, I don't buy it. Buy it later. Now she's okay. See, this is a simple uh, example. Everyone okay? Make sense? So far so good? Okay. Any questions so far? Learn anything new? And the Buddha said, don't believe. Don't believe. Don't believe what I, I teach you. Okay? Think about it. Apply all the things that you learn to make your life happier. You may be already happy, but you can be happier than this. And make sure that happiness that you cultivate is considered a sustainable happiness. That's the thing. Not happiness that come and go. Can, happiness can be sustained. Okay, start from observing precept for the rest of your life. Start from there and meditate and study Dhamma. Okay, this is uh, some other factor involved. I'm done for today.